Hello and welcome. My name is Brandon Wendell, Charter Market Technician, and I am going to be taking a look at some of the more popular cryptocurrencies out there, do some technical analysis for my weekly update. Starting off on Bitcoin here, we see the weekly Bitcoin is still pretty weak. Uh, however, we weren't able to get below 40 on the RSI, so we're not ready for the big breakdown yet, but I do believe that there's a lot more weakness than there is positives in Bitcoin right now. You know, looking back, you got really the origin of this bottom, uh, this uh, buying pressure way down at 19392 it's a possibility you know i know a lot of people who are into crypto really don't want to hear it but there's a lot of bearishness out right now and if you do projections to the downside well there may be some stopping points along the way but this is still looking more bearish than it is bullish dropping down to the daily chart same problem you can see that even though we tried to rally a little bit last week you know, we didn't get much out of it where we almost went flat really is what it came down to so if we want to see some shorter time frame projections, you can see we have impulse down, just barely corrected up. And honestly, what is that correction? Is that about a 38%? Let's see. Yep, exactly. 38% is where the close was. So that's kind of a weak retracement suggesting there's a lot more downside potential here on crypto, or sorry, on Bitcoin itself. And obviously where Bitcoin goes, so do a lot of the other cryptos anyway. So giving us a projection on the daily down to 0.618, we've got 36,725 is our next downside target, and then 31,969 as well. As far as supply goes overhead, we don't really have anything great right here. The nearest supply, if we were to rally, is right here at 50,436. So basically 50,000 and a half, 55, or no, 50,500 is right in that area. So going into a smaller time frame for the beginning of this week to see what's going on. Let me go to refresh this a little bit. There we are. You can see we're just kind of sideways correcting and we can't get out of this range to start a trend in either direction, up or down. However, as I said before, there's a lot of underlying bearish pressures right now that are likely to push us down rather than up. So watch for a break of this trend line as a possible cue for it to continue to move to the downside. If we were to break up, again, I'm not seeing much out of this. Kind of had a supply zone right here that we've already tested. I'll mark it off so you can see it. Right there. We had drop, base, drop, and we reacted to that without getting above 60, so therefore we're likely to break down. So keep an eye out for that trend line to see if it breaks, and if it does, we're going to be heading down. So let's see, under 40,000, if we got some targets here. There we go. Yeah, nearest one is right here. We'll see if that's been tested yet or not. Got another demand zone just below it. Plenty of pausing points, but nothing is really going to cause any kind of major move back up, unfortunately, for crypto, unless we see, or unfortunately for Bitcoin, unless we see something on the daily chart. And again, well, this one's already used. So we got 30, 39, 375, and then 34, 585, and then ultimately 32, 562 on the breakdown here. So that's kind of what I'm seeing on Bitcoin. I'm not really seeing anything else there. We'll go over to Ethereum and see if there's a different picture. If it's about the same, I'll start off again with the weekly picture and work my way down. And on the weekly, the good news is we still haven't broken the prior low, nor have we gone below 40. The bad news is we may. So a lot of weakness here in Ethereum as well. Dropping to the daily time frame, you can see very established downtrend. We do have supply overhead at 3763, but this looks like it's just a small correction before we continue to impulse down. That correction is about a 50%. Yep, I was right, 50% retracement. So it looks as though we're getting ready to continue to march downwards, and if we do, well, we could project where we may end up going here to the downside and also, of course, look back for any kind of demand on the daily chart here. So let's do that. We're sitting at one right now, you can see. Right here, that's the demand zone that we're currently sitting at. And I'm not really seeing much down below, except this is possible. It has demand right there. Nothing else really qualifies, and let's see, anything below 1750? Maybe. 
our next stop would be right there. So let's take a look. We've got, as of right now, a reaction where we bounce off of demand. We came back up. We're stalling out at a 50% retracement on the daily. Starting to impulse back down. Our next target would be 20, 2818, which would be a retest of this demand zone as well as the Fibonacci extension. And then if we continue down, we've got other extensions. Oops, did not mean to do that. There we go. Let's fix that. We got other targets down below as well. So going down to the four hour to see if there's anything that we can fine tune on this. Again, I'm looking more on the bearish side. So if you got the opportunity to short these, either using futures or using the actual currency, then I'm looking at really trading on the short side of crypto for a little while here. We do have a speed bump, a little bouncing point right here at 3132.71. So if we break down, we might get a false break, a little pop back up and then continuation down. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. Maybe a little head fake for uh, shaking some people around in Ethereum before it continues to push to the downside. XRP, I'll go out to the weekly chart and again, clean up my chart here. Not looking so great either. Still seeing, you know, that push to the downside. Still can't get below 40. So this is suggesting more sideways movement than anything else. Looking at the daily chart, very, very weak, very bearish. And we actually failed to reach to this supply zone we have right here at 81.46, 84.43. So still potentially moving down lower. Let's see if we have anything here as far as demand back. We do. We have right here. 59.88 is the next area of demand. And we'll see if that's where we're headed to right now because this definitely looks weak. Going into the four hour time frame, yeah, we're holding up right now. We, I think we might have a sideways week. I don't see us moving very strong in either direction, honestly. So I would expect kind of sideways to a little bit down on price and there's really nowhere to go. You know, we don't have any kind of a demand zone. I mean, the, that nearest target was still that daily way down to 68 something, I believe it was. And even if uh, fine tuning this on a 60 minute chart, I'm not seeing anything different other than well, there may be a push down from this area right here, about 77 to 77.58, 33 to 58. That's where you're seeing a little bit of selling pressure coming in. So it should push us down from that area. So you've got to stay bearish. Right now, we do have a little bit of divergence where we see, oh, maybe not. Now this moved up, so did this for the momentum. So no, I'm still seeing weakness and pushing down on price. We'll definitely try to fill that gap in the next day or two. That's where the initial move is going to be. And then after that, again, we've got that daily demand that I was talking about in the 60s. That's the only place that I can see us stopping, or even down to 59, it looks like. Yeah, there's nothing else along the way to hold us up. As I go back, it looks like crypto is dying a little bit here. It's not going to go away. We're still going to have it, so don't worry about that. But I think there's going to be some great buying opportunities as prices continue to slide for a little while and need to find their footing. Yep. Moving on to Cardano. Again, I'll start off in the bigger picture here. Clean that up and refresh. There we are, Cardano. Still looking a little weak, but it had a positive divergence. So this is showing a little more strength than the other markets. You see right here, as we move down, we move down with less bearish momentum. So that suggested this week, actually last week was gonna be bullish and this week is continuing. So you see, that's the big difference right there. Try to move down without the momentum. You didn't have that on the other markets. So Cardano is definitely looking up a little bit better than the other currencies. So let me remove this. Remove, actually let me go back to that weekly. There we go. And I guess we can measure from the overall move down. Although there might be this as your last impulse too. So there's two possible measurements here. So I'll put them both in there. Right there. And then we'll go up to daily or down to daily. And actually, whoops, before I do that, let's make sure these are different colors. So we can see the difference. So we go down to the daily and you can see that the weekly retracement right here, we've already surpassed 23.6 as we started to bounce. We hit the 50% on the smaller move and started to push back down just a little bit. 
But overall, we did make it above 60, so therefore this is pretty bullish. This is the only bullish market that I've seen so far. And our next retracement point, if we go to the, the larger one, is up here, 38.2, it would be 1.77. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some lines here. Oops, let me take off that snap mode. So I can put in the lines where I need them to be. There you go. And there. So I'm going to remove this and this. So we can get some things cleaned up here. So on the daily time frame, you do have a demand zone right here. Here we go. All right, so we do have an area of demand here at 1.31, 1.22. And if we pull back, we're likely to bounce there again to get some new highs. And it could take us right into one of those two levels. As a matter of fact, if we impulse, if we are correcting now, yeah, we got our targets just below both of those levels. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely bullish on Cardano and looking like a buy opportunity at 1.3160, 1.2270 would be a pretty good opportunity for you. And let's see if there's any overhead supply that lines up with any of these areas. This one was a supply that's already been tested. So we should be able to break through that on our next move up. And honestly, there's no overhead supply here. There's a start of some selling pressure here, but that's not a good supply zone. Although it may be, it is. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that closes just below. So it's, that's it. There's the zone. Just before it is that Fibonacci retracement that we had from the bigger picture on the weekly. So that looks like a pretty good target, 177. So it looks as though we might get a... Maybe if we get a retracement down to 131, you buy and then target the 177 for the move back up. And then we get a little stalling. But overall, this is turning a little bit more bullish, as I said, on the bigger picture. Going down to the four hour, we actually have a higher area of demand right here. Let's see. We're looking at... There it is. 13847 to 14104 as the opportunity to buy again same targets i believe to the upside let's just verify that and yeah, nothing really good there as far as supply up oh, there is another supply zone just a little lower here we've got drop base and drop change the color so i don't lose track of that one and then we pretty much run right into the, the daily one that we just saw so if you're looking at an opportunity we may bounce at the 141 versus the daily at 131 Okay, so remember, that's the four-hour zone first. So look for a bounce here. Target number one, target number two. Looks like a good, good player on Cardano. Let's take a look at Solana. We'll start off on the weekly chart on Solana. And you can see that this has been a pretty good player to the upside for quite some time. And we're not nearly as bearish on Solana as we were on Bitcoin, although it has moved down to about 50 on the RSI. Just a bit of a retracement back. I think it's probably about a 38% retracement. I'm not sure. It might be more. Let's see what it is. Oops. I bring in that template. Yeah, 50% retracement right there. So that may be all we get. We'll have to see. Hopefully for those people who own it, it's all we get. But we'll see. Going down to the daily time frame right now, I don't see us. Uh, oh, there's a, there was a bullish divergence right there. You see lower lows we popped up. And as we're coming down, we are below 40 again. So that's suggesting that we could see more weakness. But we also could see some strength coming in. If we get down to this prior low, but don't go below on the RSI, below 30, then you're likely to see a big bounce. Our next daily supply zone is right here. At 166.44, 173.85. If we go above that, we do have another zone right away at 194 to 204. So, still bearish activity here. Let's see, 142. And if we do drop, we do have demand below 110 and just under 100. Uh, there might also be a small demand zone here. I'm not sure if this one's been tested yet. We'll find out. We have drop base and a bit of a rally. See, that's tested right there at the 140 area, and I think we're there again. Yeah, we went through that zone, but held it, but it looks like it wants to go through this test. So we may continue to push down this week, it looks like, unfortunately. Even though there was some bullishness, I think we're going to keep pushing down towards the 110 area on Solana. Going down to the four-hour time frame, let's see what's going on there. 
anything changes or we can fine tune anything. It's pretty much the same area as supply 166. I mean, you could fine tune it a little bit if you wanted to, too. And 167, 171. And as we're moving down, nothing great here as far as demand. I don't think anything changes in the 130 range. Take a look back. Yeah, nope, that's a retest of this as an area. So there's nothing there that's fresh until we get back down to our area 110 again. So that's what I'm seeing so far. We may stall out at 167 or just end up turning around where we are right now. We may be on a move down. It looks as though, hang on a sec, we might have formed something here. Yeah, rally, base, 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 and then drop. So there may be a little bit of selling pressure coming in if we rally back up into the 148. 0 2 151.97 with the target of 110.82 to the downside. XRP again, starting off big picture. I'm going to clear this out. There we are. You can see bearishness, but we still haven't gone below 40 on the RSI, so it's not that bad yet, but it's looking pretty bad overall. I think the, the currency might just go sideways. And even on the daily chart, we have an overhead supply not too far away right here at 81.48, 84.56. And as far as anything else, that's about it. There's not really much being shown here. Going down to the four hour time frame. Oh, sorry, actually I want to see something on the daily. Yeah, we're having trouble getting back below 40. That's suggesting sideways movement. So we may just end up moving a bit sideways for the week. Going down to the four hour time frame, we do have a demand zone right here. We're coming close to 74.62. That could start the sideways movement. We just kind of bounce between that and then our overhead supply right here. Actually, we can do that. So that's what we're probably going to get stuck between 74 and 82 for the week. So you can play that range back and forth if you like to. But other than that, I don't see much coming out of this. Polka dot, we can hit that one too. Going again to the weekly chart to start with, Polkadot is not nearly as weak as some of the other ones. As far as momentum goes, you can see we're just kind of stalling out again. So another one that's looking kind of sideways. Going down to a daily time frame, you see it. It's just sideways, mixed red and green, and we got really no momentum at all. We had bounces off the highs right here, and we're making some new lows, but I don't see any real momentum to the downside to cause any kind of panic or sell-off. So we may end up getting stalled out between 22 and 32, basically. This is $10 range back and forth. So definitely not seeing anything. But if we do break out, looks like our next area of demand. This is not good. I don't see anything right here. I mean, yeah, this area could cause a little bit of a push-up, but it's nothing great. Oh, there it is. That's our next demand area right here. Looking at about 871. That's pretty weak. So I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but that's their next daily area of demand. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's just going to bounce back and forth between those ranges that I had right there. Looking at the smaller time frame, the four hour, we also have a demand zone. A little bit stronger on this time frame right here. You know, rally base rally. Broke out of prior highs, so that 24.29 is a good buy point. The initial selling area might be, nope, that's not good supply. It's just going to go to the 30, it looks like. So I think we're just going to bounce between 24.29 and 30 for the next week, back and forth. That's all I'm seeing right there. Anyway, that's about it for the cryptos for me. If you like the video, please push like and hit subscribe to help me out. And also so you get the videos next week as well. And every week as I do these. Got any questions? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, trade safe, trade well, and everyone take care.